Hi there, welcome to adobevideoworld.com. You're watching the videos on surface area and volume. So in this video, we'll discuss some of the extra questions related to surface area and volume. So again, these questions are very important from the concepts point of view. You will get to know more about the concepts, how we can use further, like we can say how we can extend the concepts to solve tougher questions or difficult questions. So let's get started with our first question, which is question number one. Now. The question says that a cylindrical tube opened at both the ends is made up of iron sheet which is 2 cm thick, right? And if the outer diameter is 16 cm and the length is 100 cm, so we need to find how many cubic centimeters of iron has been used in making the tube. So it's very interesting question. Let's see how we can solve this question, right? So first of all, we need to draw a cylinder like this. So let's say we have a cylinder like this right so this is a cylinder now it's given the thickness like this material thickness is 2 centimeter right and it's given the outer diameter is 16 centimeter right so this means let's say this part including the thickness part right and it's given the length is 100 centimeter right so we need to find the how many centimeters means like how many how much what's the volume of material use right so what we can do is we can take the volume of outer diameter and take the volume using inner diameter then we can find the volume of iron sheet used isn't it so let's see how we can solve this question now right so it's given outer diameter is 16 centimeter so we can say that outer radius will be half the diameter so which will be 8 centimeter right so this means from here to here outer radius is 8 centimeter right so which includes the thickness right so we can say that then outer radius will be equals to inner radius plus thickness right so outer radius is 8 inner radius we need to find plus thickness is 2 so we can say that inner radius is 8 minus 2 which is 6 centimeter right so we have inner radius and outer radius now right so let's see now how we can find the volume. So first of all, we need to find the volume of outer radius means using the outer radius, right? So we can say that volume of cylinder including thickness. So this means we need to use outer radius. So it will be pi r square h. We know that volume of cylinder is pi r square h, right? So we can write now over here the value of pi is not given. So we can use pi as 22 by 7. So this will come out to be 22 by 7 into r. Radius is 8 centimeters, right? So we can put 8 square into height is the length of a cylinder which is 100. So we have 22 by 7 into 8 square is 64 times 100, right? So we can write this like this, right? So let it be first part, right? Now, we can say now the volume of cylinder excluding, we can say thickness, right? So it will be again pi r square h. So this will be equals to 22 by 7 into r. Now we need to use radius as 6 centimeter. So this will be 6 square into height is length which is again 100. So this will come out to be 22 by 7 times 36 times 100. So let it be 2 now. Right. Now we need to find the volume of thickness. So we can say. volume of material 
or thickness of iron used will be equals to volume of cylinder including thickness minus volume of cylinder excluding thickness right so this will come out to be you can say now volume of including thickness is 22 by 7 times 64 times 100 minus 22 by 7 times 36 times 100 so we can take common out so it will be 22 by 7 times 100 to it will be 64 minus 36 right now we need to do the calculations so this will be we can say 64 take away 36 so it will be 28 so we can write this as 22 by 7 times 100 times 28 now this and this will cancel right so this will come out to be 22 times 100 times 4 so it will be 8800 centimeter cube right so we can say that now we can say that volume of iron used is 8800 centimeter cube so this is how we can use the concept of volume of cylinder to find the volume of material used to make a cylinder so it's very interesting question right so let's discuss the next question now which is question number two now the question says that rainwater which falls on flat rectangular surface of length 6 meters and breadth 4 meters right and is transferred into cylindrical vessel of internal radius is 20 centimeter what will be the height of water in cylindrical vessel if the rain falls is 1 centimeter we need to give a answer to nearest integer and we need to take pi as 3.5 3.14 so it's very interesting question again so let's see let's first explain this question what the question is trying to say now suppose we have a rectangular sheet like this let's say its length is 6 meters or 600 centimeter let's say its breadth is 4 meter or 400 centimeter now the rain falls on the flat surface and the height of we can say that the height of rain fall is one centimeter right so if you can see properly or if you can imagine properly it will convert to cuboid because now we have length breadth and the height of rainfall right let me explain over here by using the cuboid like this Now, over here we have 600 centimeter and this is let's say 400 centimeter and this becomes 1 centimeter. This height, this is the height of height of rainfall. So, this becomes a cuboid. So, we can say that whatever the volume of cuboid is that is transferred into cylindrical vessel of internal radius 20 centimeter, right? So we can use this concept to find the answer. So let's see how we can use this concept to find the answer, right? So we can say that volume of cuboid or volume of rainfall will be equals to length into breadth into height. So length over here we have 600 centimeter times breadth we have as 400 centimeter times height is 1 so this becomes 24 
centimeter cube. So this is the volume of rainfall, right? Now this becomes the volume of cylindrical vessel. Why? Because whatever the volume of rainfall is transferred to a cylindrical vessel of internal radius 20 centimeter, right? So first of all, let's see how we can do this now. So we can say that volume of cylindrical vessel will be equals to 2,40,000 right centimeter cube why because volume of rainfall is equals to volume of cylindrical vessel now we know that volume of cylindrical vessel can be written as pi r square h so this will become 2,40,000 right now we need to take pi as 3.14 and it's given internal radius is 20 centimeter. You can write over here internal radius is 20 centimeter. It's given. So we need to take radius as 20. So this will be 20 square times height. We need to find the height. This will be equals to 2 lakh 40,000, right? So this becomes say we can write over here 3.14 times 20 times 20 times h will be equals to 2 lakh 40,000 so height becomes 2 lakh 40,000 upon 20 times 20 times 3.14 right so this and this get cancelled and this and this get cancelled so 2 ones are to 1200 2 ones are and 2 600 so height becomes 600 divided by 3.14 now if you divide this this will come out to be 191.0820 centimeter now we have to find the height to nearest integer so in integers we don't have decimals so we can say that height of cylindrical vessel will be 191 centimeter. So this is how we can use the concept to solve any type of questions, right? So let's do the next question, which is question number three, and which is also a last question of this video, right? Now the question says that a cloth having an area of 165 meter square is shaped into form of conical tent of radius 5 meter right how many students can sit in the tent if a student on average occupies this much area on the ground and the second part is we need to find the volume of cone so again it's very interesting question let's see how we can do this so first of all we need to explain this question let's say we have a cloth like this and its area is given 165 meter square now this cloth is converted to a conical tent like this, right? So this means when whenever we have a conical tent, so it's only the curved surface area, curved surface area, right? Because this will be the bland part, which is always open, always open, right? So this means we have, we can write, curved surface area of conical tent as 165 meter square right so this is a we can write now so first of all we need to find the first part is how many students can sit in a conical tent if the student on average occupies this much area on the ground now this means the students are sitting in the circular part right so we need to find the area of the circle we can say like that and it's given the radius is radius of conical tent is 5 meters we can write radius of conical tent is 5 meters so we can say that area or we can say base area 
of conical tent is pi r square, right? So, pi is not given, so we can take pi as 22 by 7 into r, r is 5 square, so let it be first. Now, it's given average area occupied by a single student or a student is 5 by 7 meter square right so we can say that now or uh, let's say we need to find how many students so we can say now number of students will be equals to base area of conical tent upon area occupied by a student right so this will be now base area is 22 by 7 times 5 square upon 5 by 7 so this will come out to be 22 times 5 square upon 7 into 7 by 5 so this and this get cancelled so this will come out to be 22 times 5 times 5 upon 5 so this and this get cancelled so we have we can say 22 times 5 which will be 110 so we can say that number of students will be equals to 110 so 110 students can sit on a base area on this of this conical tent now the next part is we need to find the volume of cone right so for volume we can say you need to find the volume of cone so for volume of cone we need height we can say and we we also need another part so we need to find that first right so we can say then volume of cone is 1 by 3 pi r square h right now we need to find height let's say we need to find this height we are given with radius we can say like radius is 5 meters and slant height or which is known as L we need to find right so first of all let's see how we can find the slant height now slant height for slant height we can use the curve surface area we can say so it's given the curve surface area is 165 meter square so we can say 165 meter square is a curve surface area of cone right so you can say now so this will come out to be 165 into pi rl right so this will be 165 equals to pi is 22 by 7 times r is 5 times l so it will be 165 times 7 equals to 22 times 5 times l so l comes out to be 165 times 7 upon 22 times 5 right so we can say 5 ones are 5 or we can say 5 5 threes are 15 5 threes are 15 right so 11 2 11 3 so slant height comes out to be 21 by 2 so we have slant height as 21 by 2 centimeters now we can use Pythagoras theorem to find the height so we can say L square equals to R square plus H square so we have L square as 21 by 2 square radius is 5 square plus H square right so H square comes out to be 21 by 2 square minus 5 square right so H square 
Now we can apply the identity over here a square minus b square we can say a square minus b square equals to a minus b into a plus b so we can write 21 by 2 minus 5 times 21 by 2 plus 5 right now so this comes out to be h square comes out to be when you solve this it will be 11 times 31 upon 2 times 2 so we have h square right so now we have h square so first now we need to find the volume of volume of cone now so volume of cone is 1 by 3 pi r square h so h will be this under root 11 times 31 upon 2 times 2 so when you solve this so let's say we take under root of 31 times 11 upon 4 when you take under root of this so the answer will come out to be approximately we can say 9.2 so we have height as 9.2 centimeter now we need to find the volume of cone so we can say volume of cone will be 1 by 3 into pi is 22 by 7 times 5 square times 9.2 right so when you solve this let's say you can write volume equals to when you solve this let's say 1 by 3 into 22 by 7 into 25 into 9.2 so this means we need to do 25 times 9.2 times 22 right so we need to divide this by 21 then so the answer comes out to be 240.95 centimeter cube so this is the how we can use the concept of curve surface area slant height and height to form the volume of any given shape so these are all the important questions we have discussed so far so i can say that thank you once again for watching this video on edupediaworld.com keep watching further videos have a nice day